So this video here, I'm basically just going to show you how we can open up and see the different kind of like codexes we can use with OpenCV. So we have like dynamic show, uh, we have different kind of like formats, we have different modes and all those different kind of things. So I'm going to go through that in this video so you can play around a bit more with your camera parameters. Uh, you can set different kind of like codexes both for encoding, decoding and all those different kind of things. It can actually like increase your um, image quality if you use these settings for your camera. You can also see different kind of like options depending on your computer vision application and projects. So these parameters here is actually like a bit more important if you're going to create some actual like OpenCV and computer vision applications and projects, where if you're just playing around with it, learning OpenCV, this doesn't really matter that much. But if you're going to create a, 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 an actual like application with OpenCV, you will need to go in and specify the best parameters and settings for, um, for your actual like application. So here again, we're just going to use this program as a baseline. Uh, we have a video capture that we're opening up. We just specified the, the resolution of our camera. So 1280 by 720. So this is the frame width and the frame height. Then we just have a while loop loading in images from our webcam, showing it, and then we just wait on until we hit Q on our keyboard and it will terminate the program. But we also have some other settings that we can set up here. So we can basically just, first of all, we can specify the available backends. So if you just go up here at the top, we can just set a weightable. Um, and then we just have backends. We set that equal to a list. So basically we just have a list here. We have CV2 dot, and then we have something called video IO. So we have this video IO and then we can call underscore register. Registry. We can go ahead, basically just get the backend name for I, and then we just go through all of our capture settings uh, that we have. So I'm just verifying that this is correct. Uh, so we don't really need like this one here at the end. So we basically just go through all the all the different kind of like backends that we have in this uh, video registry. So we just have I in not in range, and then we just have video registry, and then we just call get backends. Then we basically just call, we just go through all the backends that we have, and then we just get the backend name, and then we just have a list with all the available backends that we have. Then we're basically just going down here, and then we can print the backends. Then we can see how many backends and what type of backends do we actually like have here in OpenCV with your specific camera. Then we can go in and specify them uh, when we act like opening up our video capture or our video writer for our encoder and the decoder. So it's basically just how we can specify the codecs of our cameras and images that we're working with uh, here in OpenCV. So now I'm just going to print this, uh, run this program here and then we can see the output down in the terminal. So for my camera here, it also depends on how you build OpenCV. So I have these different kind of like codexes down at the bottom. So we have uh, DSHOW, which we're opening up our webcam with now. And that is also the default, I think. Then we also have FMM, uh, PEG, we have GStreamer, if you're using like NVIDIA, Jetson and all those different kind of things. This is basically just like all the backends for handling the images and videos and so on from your camera, video file and so on. We also have some Intel MFX, MSMF, uh, DSHOW, CV images, uh, MJPEGs um, and all these different kind of like formats. So this is basically just the formats and the available backends that we have uh, for my Python distribution and my OpenCV uh, version here that I'm working with and also for my camera. So basically now we just have all these different kind of things. We can just close the webcam again. So now when we have this, we can actually go in and specify what do we actually want to use. We can specify uh, our 4CC, we can specify the format, we can play around with some of the parameters. So basically, basically just going to show you that here in this video and then um, we can run it, we can see how it actually like affects our image. So now we just go down here, we can set up our 4CCC. So we have 4CC equal to CV2. Uh, then we can basically just specify what type of like encoding do we want to use. So I'm just going with MJPEG. So this is actually like a pretty good one um, as well. You can try out different different ones. It, it depends on like how is the like how is the encoding act like done when you're loading in the images. It depends on the backend that you're using, but you can actually like do a lot of like customization to your images, how the images are loaded in, and so on. You can use different backends depending on the system you're working on. If you're on like an S device, like an NVIDIA Jetson. Uh, using GStreamer on Linux and all those different kind of things. So this is really this is really important that you look into when you're actually like creating your computer vision applications and you 
want to like just have the best of the best and you want to know like all the details of your cameras, the backends, how are the images processed um, and so on. Because like if you're using the, the wrong like compression format, it can basically like destroy the image or you won't get as much detail and, and as crisp image as you could by playing around with these different like codecs, uh, encoders and backends. So I have a 4CC and then we can basically just call the cap.set. So we have this call.set and then we can specify the properties of our capture of our 4CC. And then we just specify what we actually like specified up here at the top. Uh, we can also do some other different kind of things. We can have cap.set. We can set the frames per second that we have from our camera. So depending on your camera, you can also specify the number of frames per seconds. But we also have something called format. Uh, format, we set that equal to minus one. I'm just going to show you what that means in just a second inside of the OpenCV documentation. We also have a lot of other different kind of like things here, but I'm just going to copy paste these prints. So we basically also have these mode. We have the mode, we have the 4CC, we have the format uh, of our camera as well, or of our capture. We can also see the number of frames per second that we get in from our camera, depending on if you're able to load in 60 frames per second or uh, 30 frames per second, or even like uh, higher if your camera is capable of that. But when we're going to run the program, we're basically just going to see the modes, the 4CC, the format for your camera, FPS of your camera as well. So these are some really nice details that you can take a look at. Uh, and then you can play around with them for your own project and application. But if we just go inside the flags here for the video, we can basically just see all these different kind of like things. So these are basically the flags that I set. So we have the video capture dot set. And then we can set all these flags here from the OMCV documentation. So the one that we're playing with is the, the mode here. We have to also have the format. Uh, we also have the 4CC and also the frames per second. So we can basically set the frames per seconds as well uh, for our camera. But here we can see the 4CC. So this is the four character code of our codex. We can go in here in, into the video writer and then we can basically just see how we can specify that and also the different backends that we had. But also this format here. So if we set the value to minus one, it will fetch uncoded, undecoded raw video streams. So it will basically just go in. If you have a video stream, it will just go in and fetch the undecoded raw video stream. So you'll actually get, uh, often you will get a better quality image by calling this uh, prop format and set it to minus one. Because if you're actually like decoding your raw images, this could actually like take up some time if you don't have as much processing, uh, because then you're actually like working with images that is not decoded, um, undecoded. So basically you can just work with raw video streams that is not like undecoded. Uh, so this can act like be useful in some ways. Again, this is on a really low level. You'll need to go in and see all these different kind of things and specify it for your own applications. Um, if you're just learning out OpenCV, playing around with some basic projects, like this doesn't really matter that much. But I'm working with some real-time computer vision applications uh, where we actually like, use CUDA and all these different kind of things. And then like the bottleneck for our application for running in real time is actually like encoding and decoding of our images. Um, and because we can't really like play that much around with the video writer and the, like the video capture from OpenCV. Um, so that was actually like the bottleneck for our application or like our project that needed to run in real time. So our algorithms, we optimized them like a lot. So they were able to learn in real time. They were not the bottleneck. The bottleneck was actually like loading in the images from our webcam or like from our cameras. So this is actually like a really important thing to take a look at. Um, there's a lot here, but it's definitely like worth it to go through if you want to use it in your own applications. So you don't end up in a situation as I was. As I was in. So we can basically set all these different kind of things here, but let's now just go back and run the program and see um, how it works out. So here we're just going to run the program. We see here mode minus one, we can see the 4CC, so this is basically doesn't really matter for us. We also have the format, we set that equal to minus one frames per second for our camera. It is set to zero right now, but we can actually go up and specify it um, up here at the top. So let's just go up here. Um, so okay, I have cap cap.set, then we can specify the frames per seconds. We just set that equal to 30, 30 and now we should actually like get frames per seconds um, equal to 30 down here at the bottom if we actually go in and specify the number of frames per seconds. So again, we run it and now we should actually like get 30 down here at the bottom. 
Um, so now we can see we have open up our webcam. We have specified like the resolution of our webcam, the number of frames per second, different modes, uh, codexes, and so on. So this is actually like really helpful. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification on the video. Also, like this video here if you like the content and if you want more in the future. It really helps me and YouTube channel out in a massive way. If you're interested in more computer vision tutorials where we actually go over basic image operations, uh, stereo vision, how we can use two cameras to get depth information. Uh, we also do some point cloud processing. So we go over all these different kind of like computer vision algorithms, techniques, the theory behind it. So if you're interested in that, I'll link to the tutorial up here or else I'll see you next week guys. Bye for now.